Mr. Colombo, it's been a lot of years. I'm so glad to see your face. Rachel Steven, thank you so much for being here. We have a pretty exciting program today, as you can see by our guests on our screen. I call them our mod squad here. And um, they're going to take you through the world of AI and events. But first of thought, I had to add my two cents. And by the way, I just got off of watching Tony Robbins um, talk to 70,000 people um, in a room that was just filled with screens. The guy is masterful. I don't care what you think about being a life coach or what he does. If you get a chance to watch, it's on for the next three days. Watch him talk to people face to face, read the chat room, get everybody involved on a 70,000 person call. It's kind of like incredible. Um, and I think it's a, a skill that we're all going to have to get better at. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to... I had to build a little Welcome AI. to the virtual events group where we help you make better meetings regardless of whether they take place at the Marriott, the Metaverse, or Mars. Today we've invited some of our members and friends to share their Gen AI creations. But first, let's get started with a little poll we created to see how you fit into the Gen A landscape. So... My problem, you heard she can't say Gen I, Gen AI. She says Gen A. I tried it 700 times to correct her English. This is Synthesia. I spent maybe 10 minutes doing this. So imagine what you could do um, if you spent some time. You pick an avatar, you type your words, and the avatar speaks them. And it is that easy. And that's the free version. There's more you can do. You can work with dialect. You can do multi-language translations. So it's just the beginning of what we're starting to see with AI and synthetic humans um, that are really great for, I think, repetitive things. Um, I belong to the um, ITU's AI for Good, and they use Synthesia or DID or any one of a number of things to do their avatar that says the same thing every day, which meant somebody didn't have to put on a suit and say, and here are our rules for engagement and here's where you press and here's how you navigate. It's all done synthetically. So um, that, that gives you some idea of my very limited talents. But now it's time for you to tell us how you use AI. Right. And I am going to forward to the Gen AI poll. And this is going to involve you using a program that we use a lot here called Mentimeter. And I will show you there are two ways that you can use Mentimeter on a mobile device or on their website. But first question that you're going to poll and your answers will show up live is what does November 2022 mean to you? And... There are your choices. Let me get rid of my head here. Um, what does November 2022 mean to you? Thanksgiving? We vote? ChatGPT went into public beta? Or all of the above? And the way that you do it is to take a picture of the QR code, which will let your phone show the question, or you can go into menti.com and use the code on the screen. And let us know if you're having problems because we're still checking this out as a, as a way to work. And we have a lot of people that know the right answer. So what is it, 2024 now, not halfway through? And ChatGPT, I would venture to say, changed a lot of our lives and it's only just begun changing lives. And that's why it's so important that we need to understand um, how to use it and what's going on back there. Um, it um, should not be a black box. So that's what we're going to discuss today. Next polling question. I use a Gen AI program too. And I'm going to start the mentee. I use it how, how often? Sorry, I use it how often? I'm doing like six things at once. Um, and let's see how we're doing. We have daily, 
We have a lot of dailies. To remember, I don't know if you're old enough like me to remember when you started keeping a browser open. And uh, I think we're getting to the point very quickly where we use a Gen AI program daily to do any number of things, which brings us, oh, we have a 9% as a monthly. Somebody had a real change of heart. And um, nobody says I never touch this stuff. So if I move on to our next question, the thing I do most with Gen AI is, and again, use the QR code, use the Menti, and we'll, whether you curious to know whether you're doing writing, whether you're creating images, creating videos, using it as a personal assistant, or if you want to say what else, you can just put it in the chat. And I like Michael's comment. Okay, we have to put ARCA. It's not coming up. Oh, it's not coming up because I didn't start it. Okay. Yeah, let me go back. This is when this is when Zoom's kind of really stupid. Um, and I have to go into PowerPoint. Start it. Okay. Mm. Mm. I can do this. Okay, now you should be able to vote to your heart's content. And we've got a 50 with videos and we've got an assistant. Nope, 50 went down. We've got a lot of videos. We've got a lot of writing. We've got some other who we'd love to hear exactly what you're doing. Um, and that is really it for the poll. So you're doing a lot of things. You're doing it often. And um, today we're gonna focus on three people that have built AIs, that are using AIs to run their companies. And we're going to um, uh, learn from them. And again, really um, love to hear from you and make this as interactive as possible. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start by turning this over to Jeremy Toman. Everybody has to know Jeremy. Uh, if you've been in this industry any length of time, but Jeremy's really created a pretty fantastic experience. And Jeremy, I am going to turn the screen over to you and we're going to take a look at AugX and Augie. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hope you're all having a good afternoon. Um, appreciate the kind intro. Uh, by way of background, I've been in and around the tech media space uh, long enough to have some of these. So I was early at uh, Sling Media, if you've heard of the Slingbox. I helped launch startups like Sonos, Waze, and Voodoo in their earliest days. Have had a few startups of my own all around tech and media. Spent a few years at companies like Warner Media and CBS Interactive. And started Augie about two and a half years ago. Uh, came out of a very personal need. I won't bore with the little details, but I was trying to make a video. I was trying to promote my, actually at the time, my podcast. And I had access to all the tools, all of them, everything you could possibly imagine having access to, I had. And I took tutorials. I took 40 hours of self-paced tutorials. And at the end of it, I'm basically exactly where I am today, which is nowhere. And I had this realization that people like me trying to use a tool like, say, Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, it's not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's sort of, to define overkill, it's like me learning how to fly a helicopter to go to Walgreens to get some milk, right? It just... It's not the right tool for the job. I need a 60 second promo on TikTok. I need a tool designed for 60 second videos on TikTok. So we built Augie and Augie is a video first marketing studio. And the idea of it being empower anyone and everyone in your organization to be part of the video creation, editing, publishing and monetization process. So basically it's a video first tool for, um, for the rest of us. So with that said, I'm going to jump into a demo. We're going to have some fun. I'm going to do live demos because that's how I roll and we'll see how it all goes. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. So share screen over here. Let me make sure I've got this all right. And if I could get a thumbs up somewhere that someone can see my screen, that would be awesome. Cool. I got a couple in there. Thank you. So I'm trying to set it so I can see you guys and the screen at the same time. There we go. 
So this is the Augie dashboard. Now I'll be pretty candid. Come Tuesday, it's going to look a little different. It's going to look, look, look a little more like this. And we got some all sorts of cool, flary things coming. But I'm going to do my demo today on our on our current data, and then I'll show you a little more sneak peek. So in Augie, what we've tried to do is make it really, really easy for you to start with just about anything. If, for example, let's say you have a webcam recording, right? Let's say one of you records yourselves. Hey, everybody, I'm Jeremy. This is my startup. Or, hey, team. Or, hey, investors. Whatever kind of one-to-one -one or one-to-many update you might make. If you want to make that video picture-in-picture, -picture, for example, uh, first of all, you can do that in one click in Augie. And second of all, what you might not know is by doing something like that, you'll increase the engagement on your video by about 35%. Uh, we've already learned through YouTube and TikTok and Insta stats that if all you are is a talking head, they are starting to downrank those videos because they want people to create things. But we know that's hard. The second scenario people come to argue with is that you already have a script. You've already written your narrative, your ad script, your promo script, whatever it might be. You can just come in, cut and paste it. You can read it yourself or use one of our AI voices to read it for you. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Now, for those of you who have never made a video before, this is our teach you to fish moment, as, a, as it were. And so the first thing we encourage you to do is pick why you're making a video. So I'm gonna, we have a bunch of different options in here. They all basically are designed about script writing. So we're gonna make an ad though today, just for the fun of it. And I'm gonna use a uplifting tone. And um, Robin, you're always so good, good to me. Can you give me one of your hobbies, Robin? Something you like to do in your spare time? Give me something you're into. Ooh, I'm going to go for. Don't say AI. No, I did kayaking. Can you hear me? Kayaking. All right. So we're going to make an ad today for Robin's kayaking shop. In my, in my dreams. In my next life. Yeah. For our next life. And uh, I'm sorry, Robin, I don't remember where you live these days. Located in. Just say on the Hudson River. Wait, I'm on the Hudson River. Where are you now? Well, I live in Manhattan and near Hudson, New York. So always on the uh, Hudson River, just back and forth. Well, I'm on I'm on Irvington, which is definitely on the Hudson. You're so, on my train. Yeah, you're on on my there train. There we go. So here we go in the heart of the magic. Oh, well, we even changed this majestic Hudson Valley lies Robin's kayaking shop. And so you can change your script however you like. Again, you don't have to use these features. We're we know there are a lot of people who are sort of I don't want to use certain aspects of Gen AI. So every time we use Jen in the product, it's an optional component. So that way, if you like to write your own script or you have a pro micro marketer on team, that's great. Same thing with voicing. I can just record this myself in the heart of the majestic Hudson Valley, et cetera. But no one wants to hear me talk. So we're going to skip that part. Instead, um, by the way, you can clone your voice as you record. But we've also included a bunch of pre-built AI voices that you can use. Um, again, everything we do, licensing rights are included. So here are some sample voices. Hi, I'm Alex, and I'll be the voice of your Augie today. Hi, I'm Amrita Anshu, and I'll be the voice of your Augie today. Hi, I'm Amy, and I'll be the voice of your Augie today. So we'll go with Amy. I would obviously love to have the dulcet tones of Robin's lovely voice do this for us. But for uh, for the sake of keeping us moving, we'll use Amy here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just hit sounds good. I can decide, is this more TikTok or more YouTube? You can change that later. And I'm just going to sort of dive right into the next step here. So Augie's now going off and starting to make our video for us. And let me explain exactly what it does. Augie uses your audio to build an entire video. Whether you speak a narration, talk at a webcam, or use one of our AI voices, same thing. We end up with a, with a narration. Augie takes that narration and turns it into text. We actually use the same transcription service that Alexa's power, so we have pretty strong recognition there. We then, and you can actually watch it on screen as I talk, we then break it into shots. Just so I get a quick, I like doing a little audience interaction, keeps you from multitasking too much. Give me a show of either a raised hand or an emoji or something if you yourself are very comfortable with pro video editing tools. I'm expecting massive, maybe two at most there. I go, oh, there's two right there, okay. So if you're, if you're used to it, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. But if you've never used these tools, if you've even seen a screenshot, say of iMovie, you'll always see a timeline. Anytime you're making a video, there's a timeline, A, then B, then C, then D, whatever those things might be. What Augie does is, figures out your timeline for you, 
auto fills each segment of that timeline with a suggested piece of content that is either coming from your content library or ours, and then gives you an easy to use editing tool to take it from there to finished. So we're gonna dive right in because guess what? Our video is here ready for, ready for us to play with. And so if you noticed when I was doing the setup here, I didn't specify any of my own media, which means this entire video, this whole rough cut, which is an industry term for basically first draft, uh, this whole rough cut's made from nothing but Yeti stock videos. Uh, again, we have over 120 million clips pre-licensed. You can use these commercially. You can use these on web, TV, social, whatever you need. So that said, let's get going. Let's take a look at what our video is. Let's see if we've got uh, Robin's shop in good shape or not. In the heart of the majestic Hudson Valley lies Robin's kayaking shop, your gateway to aquatic adventures. Feel the river's gentle embrace as you paddle through its shimmering waters. At Robbins, we don't just sell kayaks. We ignite passion for exploration. All right. Now, I don't know about you, but this is where I'm going to say something kind of weird here. I don't think that was all that great. I think some of it was kind of good, but I don't know why I'm seeing fire right here. And I don't know why that dad was on the couch. So it made no sense. Robin obviously could not publish this video as it is. What's interesting about Augie and what our users tell us they love so much about it is the ability to take it from this stage to completion or at least pretty close. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually change this from Hudson to Hudson River. And what you're seeing here is all the different kinds of matches that Getty is suggesting for that clip. So obviously there's a lot going on in the Manhattan, but I think something like this probably lines up a bit better with the vision of this story, which is about the heart of the, the Hudson Valley. And this is, I think this is Beacon. What do you think, Robin? Are we near Beacon here? I think this has a Beacon-y look. Yeah, I think we're pretty close. At least the river is recognizable. Yeah. There we go. Now over here, I think she's on a paddleboard, not a kayak. So if you can see here again, our AI suggested some terminology, but I'm gonna, so I've done a kayaking video before. I'm gonna just switch this to kayaking because I really wanna drive this point home is, I think this looks like a really good, it's got some venture action going to it. And here, feel the river's gentle embrace. Our AI picked the phrase gentle embrace. Unfortunately, it missed the word river. So this is the kind of thing where, you know, in ChatGPT, you might get hallucinations. In Augie, you might get mismatches. Again, the fun part is if you want to make a change, we make suggestions for you right off the bat. If you want to manually, I'm just going to do kayaking again because I thought these results were so perfect for what I'm trying to do. And here, sell kayaks. Well, let's say, what if I try kayak store? What might I find? Well, there's someone doing something with a kayak, I hope. That's enough. And what we hear from our users again is that this process actually becomes a lot of fun to do because you're no longer, oh my God, what's going to be in my video? And you're almost more, we use the analogy, it's like paid by numbers, right? So kayaks, let's try kayaks and see what we get. And then we'll get a whole bunch of them on the board. Point being, I can just kind of keep making the changes. Now, if I don't find what I want, I also have the notion of my own library. And so I've been uploading lots and lots of clips and videos and such, so I can incorporate something here into Robin's kayaking shop. But what I'm gonna do just in the interest of time is I'm gonna drag it from my desktop. Um, we're gonna need um, a call to action here. So I have a QR code present. So I'm just going to throw that in the video here. So that way, when this is airing, maybe on the digital out of home display, you know, I can always have my followers um, know, where to, know where to click. So I'm going to have that appear for the first 10 seconds. And then just to drive it home, I'll add a little Made with Augie logo up here. Now, no, no uh, video works without a little background music. Let's get something. Let's try a little pop. I'm not even going to preview it. We'll just try it out. And it might go on social, so we're gonna need closed captioning because that's a key thing for, for social videos to have closed, closed captions on, which instantly shows me I might need to move that QR code, right? So a lot of what we're really trying to do here is help an audience of video makers who aren't video makers use the platform. So let's see the after. Again, I've only changed the first four slides. I'll show you a finished video in just a moment. The heart of the majestic Hudson Valley lies Robin's kayaking shop your gateway to aquatic adventures. Feel the river's gentle embrace as you paddle through its shimmering waters. At Robbins, we don't just sell kayaks.
And so you can see how in the minute and a half I was explaining and talking while I was doing it, I effectively got my video into better shape. Now, what I'll do next though, is just show you an example of a uh, finished video built on the platform, just so you can see a bit of a bit of an after. So here's an ad we made and marketers, advertisers, and content creators. Introducing Augie, the all-in-one video studio that saves you time and money by using AI to optimize your video creation and editing workflow. Transition. Say goodbye to hours spent video editing and hello to your new video creation tool. Register for free today to get started. Right, and so that's, oops, sorry, wrong button. Let me turn the share back on, excuse me. Okay, um, the last couple of things I wanna show are this. So um, if, for example, you have uh, uh, made a video of yourself. So in this case, I'm gonna go to Congresswoman Susan Wilde. The Allentown Film Festival had an AI component this year and they used Augie for it. What you're going to see here, Susan recorded this video using her webcam, just like I mentioned earlier. But you'll see now we have one new tab in our UI called Placement. And what Placement does, you can actually watch over here. It lets me, as the, as the creator, choose, do I want to show myself or something else? Do I want to make it a picture-in-picture, -picture, as I said, like John Oliver? In fact, you can do some really funky stuff if you want to have fun with it and go nuts with how you might lay something out. We've taken basically about 80% of the core things people try to do in uh, video editors and just make them super easy. So here's an example of this. Hi, I'm Susan Wild, and I represent Pennsylvania's 7th Congressional District in the United States House of Representatives in Washington, DC. This is my Augie challenge for the Allentown Film Festival. What I most love about serving in the United States Congress is giving back to the community that has given and in this example, I'm just going to skip ahead a few segments. Um, we use our generative video capability. So we've integrated with Video Diffusion. I'm sure most of you have heard of Sora or, um, so, or Flicky, Runway, Pika, and a few others. Just to be really transparent, we don't compete with any of them. We love all that technology. We look at that as a component of what we do. So we have a Generate tab. And you can see that if I go back to this frame, Somebody wrote a prompt, it wasn't me who made this video. Someone on the team wrote a prompt, picked a style. We have about 130 different styles to choose from. And it rendered this. My mother used to say that I was hard of hearing when I had a book in my hand. Um, also art, I loved art. And um, just, you know, getting out there and getting dirty as a little kid, I, I'm big goal. So this is how we're combining user-owned media, generated media, and stock media all into one experience because candidly, we think the future of you doing storytelling will involve them all. So I wanna do one sneak peek of something I haven't shown anybody before, if you're okay with that, Robin. Sneak peek, you got it? Okay. So everybody can see my screen still. What I'm scrolling through here, this is an eight and a half minute segment of what's called B-roll. It's just stock video of sporting stuff. No audio, just here. Um, as you can guess with the video, we don't have a frame by frame um, guide. We don't have metadata tagging. We just have a long video. But in Augie, if you upload a video to our system uh, in our upcoming launch, one of the things you'll be able to do is designate that you want to use that content to make your video. So what I did is I wrote another prompt like you saw before, make a video about uh, why going to the gym matters or something like that. I then pointed it at that B-roll, and this is the output, with no human intervention on this video whatsoever. In a world where challenges abound, embracing physical fitness becomes a beacon of strength. It's not just about peak performance or sculpted muscles, it's a roadmap to resilience and well-being. Each drop of sweat is a testament to your dedication, shaping not just your body, but your mind. The path to physical fitness is a journey of empowerment a symphony of determination and perseverance. It fuels your vitality, sharpens your focus, and elevates your spirit. 
So lace up those sneakers, breathe in the energy of movement, and let physical fitness be your anthem of vitality in a cacophony of chaos. And so that is a end-to-end -end process of, I upload a lot of B-roll effectively, I give it a prompt, I pick a voice, and I go. And now, by the way, I can still go off and make changes. So if I decide instead of using clips in my library, I actually want to go back to Getty stuff, I can just swap that in. I don't have to use any given thing. I can generate, I can replace, et cetera. So that's Augie in a quick nutshell. I uh, feel I'm probably actually over my time. Um, so I'm sorry if I am, uh, but I'm happy to do, are we doing Q&A or are we going straight to the next I one? Think we're, I think we're gonna save, can you hear me? Do I unmute? I think we're gonna save our Q&A, but Jeremy, I've watched you on this process you've made so much progress and have taken right. some of the, uh, I used it very early on and I remember some of those pain points. So good for you. Um, just, just amazing. But let's, let's it's all, by any, the way, it's all coming from user feedback. So we've had, you know, we don't talk about it, but we've had over, well over a hundred thousand people come into the platform. We've had hundreds of thousands of Augies made and all we do is get their feedback and make the product better. So people, you know, people yeah. said, I really want to use my own stuff more than stock stuff. How can we do that? And we start, well, we can, here's what we can do, right? So. And the other thing that you. struck me about what you said is data is, uh, video is data now. It has a, it's not just minutes and minutes of video. It's it's data that you can use and, and you are teaching people to use it like that. So I am going to, I'm going to move on here to our next speaker. Can everybody see my slide? I don't, I've lost where I am completely. Yeah. Um, yep. So known Margaret for quite a while. Margaret is an events maven, like a, a, a great renown, but Margaret early on also said, I'm gonna do something to start looking at this. And rather than just you get involved little by little, Margaret dove and she decided I am going to make an event from beginning to end using AI. And Margaret's going to share sort of how she did that and how you should think about that as well. Margaret, take it away. Yeah, so first, the, the the interesting thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do is when I uh, got ready for this today, I had this like, you know, brain thing and said, let me use Augie to tell the story versus me telling, you know, the, setting the tone for, um, for this. So I'm going to share the video that I did. And I'm one of the people who's you know, have very little video background. I didn't have a lot of my own um, video footage to use, but I used a lot of what they had. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, if you have any doubts as to the power of AI in the events industry, it's time to cast them aside and embrace this incredible opportunity. I am super excited to talk about how Pop Experiential is using AI to shake up the event and experiential space and how we are using it not only in our regular agency practice, but with some industry colleagues, Ryan Costello of Event Farm and Audrey Hegwood, to develop the first event completely powered by AI. Pop's CEO, Margaret Lonzel Pennis, Ryan and Audrey, jumped on a Zoom meeting on December 1st, a day after ChatGPT was unveiled. Curious explorers, they started to brainstorm about what this could mean to the events industry, an industry typically slow to adopt and embrace new things. They started to ideate around the concept of an event for the event industry completely powered by AI. What would it look like? Who would attend? What would the content be comprised of? Where should it be held? How could they get funding? As they were talking, they had an idea. What if they just started putting prompts into ChatGPT, which is exactly what they did? With very intentional prompting, they worked with ChatGPT, whom they now call Mikey, and Mikey went into action. It named the event Autonomous XP, suggested locations including Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Singapore, identified complementary or potentially competitive events, created attendee personas, created a messaging narrative, developed a full content outline supported by suggested tracks, sessions, and speakers, developed a full sponsorship prospectus, including pricing and revenue expectations, devised a working budget, created a work-back schedule, developed a marketing plan, pretty much everything. 
Allowing AI to do the heavy lifting in terms of research, analysis, and facilitate the creative process allowed the group to think strategically and took them down paths they likely wouldn't have considered. It was mind-blowing. A year and a half later, Pop Experiential considers itself a master of the AI game and is using a plethora of AI tools to create new opportunities and avenues for its clients as they morph their own events and experiences in a fast-changing world. Margaret is also training sales, marketing, and event management teams on how to use it as a creative and strategic tool, not just for text and planning, but for logo development, graphic design and renders, video, and more. Stay tuned for dates and more info on Autonomous XP, and give us a shout if you'd like a session with Margaret and Mikey. So there you have it. Um, and it really did not take me that long. I mean, maybe... An no, hour and on your vacation. We just really want to know that you did this on your vacation. I we did it on my vacation. I did it. I'm in Spain right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, but you know, Robin sort of followed my journey um on this project, and it has opened up um incredible opportunity for um my team and I as an agency. Um, I the the first thing when you're on the events side of things is people get very nervous about you know, AI taking their jobs and you're not, they're, they're not going to be relevant. And my whole thing is if you don't learn it and you don't become a master at it, somebody's going to take your job from you that does have all of those tools. We find that um, it really opens up your mind to be strategic and creative because the, the stuff that you used to Google and have to put all that stuff together. And then let's, you know, I've been in the industry a long time. At one point there was no Google, you know, those kind of things that took forever are just now become more rote, easier to do, get all of the grunt work out of the way. And then, as it said in the video, it just takes you down paths that you hadn't thought of and your mind is really open. So we um, we use it for pretty much everything. I mean, we are a third party, right? So we have clients in everything from technology through furniture. And uh, we don't have it create everything for us. We are very, very deliberate and intentional in terms of, what are the objectives? What, what is the strategy? What should we be thinking about? What haven't we thought about? Who's out there doing something else? What are the best selling campaigns? And it gives us all of that information. And from there, we create and strategize um, concepts around that. So I think Gigi has a list of all the tools that you use now, and it's probably really instructive. Um, the one that baffles me is like, the spread. I'm still not very good at the sp the spreadsheet part of AI, like how to figure out pricing. Um, um, I'm, well, you can. I mean, you know, you can do it in chat. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it'll do a whole spreadsheet. You know, the whole thing about it really is, you know, people say they use it, but it's really how you use it. The more you you'll get in, you'll get out of AI what you put into it. The more specific you are. The more deliberate you are, the more detailed you are, the more background you give, the more attachments that you add, the more URLs you put in, you know, anything that you put in, it will take that information and craft it for you. So if part of that is, you know, I have it helping me with budgets now, you know, and we call it Mikey, M-A-I. K-E-Y, and it's sort of named after that uh, Life Serial commercial kid. Will Mikey like it? So we sort of run it, run it by Mikey. Um, and, you know, we'll say based on this information and this revenue um, strategy and these expenses that we are anticipating, please do a spreadsheet with a profit and loss over a 12-month period of time, and it will just do it for you. Now, you have to vet it, and you have to be sure that you know, it's making sense. And and a lot of times what I find is when I don't get the right answer, it's because I didn't ask the right question. Um, I also find that being very polite <laughs> to Mikey is a very important thing. And and the, the other thing I really love about it is it's sort of getting to know us, you know, my team is we do have, it it, it talks, it, it it generates things in our voice. Um, we, we like to be a little bit cheeky. Um, so it will generate things in our voice. It will, um, you know, we'll have these threads. It'll go back in and tell it, remind us of something that we wanted to do earlier. So um, it's it's just really incredible. And right now I, I just finished, um, it was uh, contracted by uh, visitors and the convention bureau of New, Newport Beach to come in and, and train their sales, finance and marketing teams. 
And they were blown away in terms of being able to generate RFPs, respond to RFPs, create a fam trip, um, you know, to figure out how much food and beverage would be needed, what transportation, how many hotel rooms. I mean, and then the finance people were like, how, how do they forecast, right? So we work, work through a whole dialogue around that. So there's really, there's simply nothing that you you can't do. And it just makes you, you know, smarter and brighter and happier and more nimble and more creative and more strategic. And um, I, I think it's a, I think it's an incredible time that we're in right now to be able to be experiencing this. And that is why you shouldn't come to our next session when we talk about misinformation, deep fakes, and then yes. the job market. Because I have some clients in the protect AI space, so I, I get it. I get it. Right. No, it's really, it really, um, no, and I just came back from AI for good in Geneva where, I mean, forget, uh, yes, we're talking about events, but we're talking about climate change. We're talking about investigative journalism. We're talking about how AI, you know, hunger, health. I mean, we're really talking about some wonderful opportunities with AI, as long as we're aware of some of the less wonderful ones. So any question, quick question for Margaret before we turn the, uh, um, turn the microphone over to Piers, who's been so patient. And then I want to call out somebody in our audience also. So we still have a bunch to do. But Margaret, thanks. Any questions? Do I see any in the chat? Nope. Um, you can come back at us. But I am going to... Well, I've lost where I am completely. I am going to introduce Pierce. So Pierce also, uh, Pierce Fox, has been studying and documenting and producing shows and creating reports about the retail industry forever. So what does a guy like that do when AI comes along and he has to incorporate it in his business? Well, he invents his own AI. And we we picked a very young picture of him to put on our banner, but he still looks just as great as ever. Thanks for coming, Piers. So that's wonderful, Robin. It's only two years old. It's not that long ago, surely. Um, hi, everybody. Wonderful to uh, see you. Um, so uh, you see the guy? This is you. This is you the day after your event. You produce your event, yeah? Um, you've, you've worked hard. You've worked, did all that planning. You pulled off a great show. But creeping up in the background, uh, we have little AI maybe wanting to kind of ruin your vacation and ruin your glory. What's happening here is at a lot of events, this is kind of the shot at the end of the event, the end of the day, the end of the virtual events convention. We, and we've worked hard, we pulled off a great show and we all have a drink. And for many people, we go on vacation. Yeah, we all go away um, and take the weekend off. We take a week off, it's been so hard. They just spoke to the people at Can Can Lions next week. They're all going on vacation straight after. The problem is there's a few things that kind of ruin um, ruin that uh, vacation, okay? And you see that guy on the right? He's probably got four-letter name. He's a kind of Tubbs or Bart or Brad. Um, he's your sponsor. He's your sponsor. And whilst you're sat there by the pool having a nice cocktail, he is sharing content about the event. He's maximizing his spend and making sure that he's getting the most out of his buck, okay, that he's spent. He's spent a lot of money going. And he's not the only one ruining your fun. You have all these pesky attendees also sharing content whilst you're trying to relax and relax, go away. Um, and the challenge is that, you know, if we simplify it and simplify a, a event production, we have the planning, we have the event, and then we have the content afterwards. But what is happening is um, we are going. We, we are often taking a break um, straight after the event, and we're thinking about coming back to the content a little bit later. The challenge is that once we come back two days later, a week later, a month later, the content is stale. The content is out of date. And this picture, I know it looks real, it is a not a real picture because the people aren't looking at your YouTube videos. They are, um, they've gone away. Your YouTube video look, views are in the hundreds, not in the thousands. 
uh, and you don't know why. And so um, my presentation today was really just kind of cause a little bit of a setup about what some of the motivations that we have around creating event minds. Um, as Robin said, I've been running uh, events since forever, since 2007, conferences and conventions and webinars and sessions. <laughs> and um, I started getting involved like everybody else 18 months ago with AI and wanted to see how it could change the way I ran the business. And now I've built it into a product that helps other people uh, use generative AI. And so what I'm doing here is creating uh, content around events very fast uh, and a lot of content, okay? And so we help um, we help event producers, we help sponsors, we help attendees get the most out of events. They get content they can share on social, they can get content they can share in newsletters. Eventually they're gonna get video content, audio content and other content as well, okay? Uh, and we're really kind of building this for associations. So there's associations that have 10 pole events, thousands of other events, local events, chapter events, corporate events, B2B major events like South by Southwest, those sort of quasi South by Southwest, Shop Talk, Can Lions, um, and even small webinar, virtual webinars as well. Um, and what we're doing is, or what we've done is, we're not doing anything too unlike what you're doing already. Um, some of you folks, many of you folks are transcribing uh, content, maybe through a tool, uh, some of you folks are putting that content into chat GPT and getting, getting that content to be crunched. Um, maybe they're writing an article, maybe you're writing a newsletter. Um, and so we're not doing, I'm not doing, I'm not doing something that's drastically that different, but what I've done is I strung together a whole bunch of AI assistants to produce that work super, super fast. And so what we're beginning to offer is when you kind of use the system and you upload basically an audio file or a video file or a transcript is you can have multiple outputs um, uh, and our sort of service promises within an hour, but mainly within about 20 minutes. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different types of content from newsletters to press releases to speaker packs and takeaway sessions as well. And output is Word documents, output is Google documents, one day um, to be output as Canva in Canva flows, um, premium as well. So lots of different play, uh, themes. So I'm just gonna quickly um, jump over and talk about a demo, uh, just show a demo, I think, for a second. Um, and I would, just gonna show you the back end and just show you uh, kind of roughly how it works, okay? So, this is the dashboard. This is dashboard. It has a bunch of events that we've been producing for. We've been um, testing and trialing for companies about three months old. Um, um, and it's a spin-off of a, another AI company that we created because this one we have a lot of conversation around. But here's a bunch of events. So if you're an event producer, this could be an event that you're producing, this AI conference that took place a few weeks ago. <laughs> this AI conference has about 12 to 14 talks. And I think we saw Jeremy's session the prompts, like I'm um, styling the prompts. And here, um, it, if you can see it, is we do a little setup for every event. We we write a style prompt. We write an audience overview as well for the system. And we, for every event, for the event producers, excuse the scrolling, we upload, um, we upload the speakers. So a spreadsheet of speakers before the event. We upload the agenda, excuse the scrolling. Um, so we upload the agenda. So this, is a, this is a 12 to 14 session thing. Uh, talk, left-hand column is the, um, the session name, right-hand column is the speaker, okay? And the speakers all get matched. And so we know a lot of data before the event happens, okay? And then what happens is, um, very simply, the, the event producer, the content manager, the social media marketer, or me, um, we basically uh, upload the transcript in one of these kind of upload dialogues. Uh, we choose the session that it relates to. Um, and then I choose what type of content that I want to have related to it. Okay, so a whole bunch of different things. I remind them who my, my email is, how fast I want it processed. I click submit and then there it goes. 
and then going back a step. So, and within about, within a one hour, definitely, maybe 20 minutes, you'll get an email with all the links to all that content. You'll get a folder with that content. Um, and you can see the content here on this page, okay? And so this is that event that we produced, the AI event. One of the challenges we have with these uh, this content is there's a lot of it. I mean, folks aren't folks are already on vacation and they're not ready for this volume of content. But sponsors are, audience members are, speakers are as well. So if you can see, we have some different types of content in this column. There's speaker packs, newsletters, and I'm going to show you what each of those look like. So um, this is speaker pack. So sharing content with a speaker um to um around the content so uh around the speech that they gave okay so i'm just going back a step because it clicked a link that i didn't want to do i'm actually going to click the link so then i'm going to look at it and so what we do is we output into editable um content okay because we know as social media managers marketing managers you want to take the content and edit it you don't want the final video so we output it into kind of formats which are really easy to use. So this is a pack that you send to a speaker, like, hey, can you share content about your speech? Here's a reminder, here's the abstract, here's a reminder, here's a suggested link post, um, LinkedIn post, here's a tweet, and things like that, okay? I um, hope you're still following me, I think you are. And then, um, uh, you know, and it can be, there's the speaker pack, we can do uh, newsletter content, so here's the suggested newsletter content of another talk that took place as well. And you can just say, here's the subject, here's the thing, here are the big topics, here's some bullets and things like that. And these newsletters can be trained on, um, on your previous newsletters, best in class newsletters and things like that. And it can be multi-format. So it can also be a PowerPoint deck. So we can output into PowerPoint. This is in the for, for, uh, design of the session, this uh, AI session. And again, within 20 minutes, we can create these documents which provide a quote from the speaker. Um, this gives a bio of the speaker, which is, comes from the pre, from the data we uploaded in the past. But it tells you what the session was about. It talks about the themes, um, especially in the B2B space. A lot of attendees have to go back to work and share content with their colleagues. And we're trying to be helpful like that. Um, so... Um, I think that's um, uh, really, I think kind of those are the things that we're thinking about. And in terms of, oh, sorry, Zoom is interfering with me. I think ultimately, uh, you know, we're just trying to create this kind of multi-format content for events. Um, and, and ultimately, what are we trying to do? Where's my little picture? Um, ultimately, what we're just trying to do is... Um, uh, just support event producers, allow them to continue the conversation and then probably just go on vacation once the event program is complete rather than once the event is complete. Yeah, we're all going to go kayaking. No, I I love this because really you built something of parts that are already there, but specific to your problem being solved. And I think that's so terrific. And I also think it's highly sponsorable also. I mean, if you want, want a sponsor for your newsletter and that was just going to be an extra burden that drove your staff crazy, you now can use AI to generate it, yeah. get sponsored. Um, I, I even wonder whether time is going to become something that we call, you want, your, you want your, your, your data from this event by tomorrow. You can pay a little more for that, <laughs> you know? Oh, we'll if, you, if you think, Robin, there's a couple of things. One is... Um, a, you know, if you have a multi-day event, you might want to send an email at the end of the day or the start of the next day about what was said. Yep. And that system can do that. You might want to give the host some notes about what was said and what's about what was said yesterday and things like that. Super easy for the system to crunch that data and provide those notes. Even give moderators questions to ask the, um, ask the, um, the panelists as well based on content that happened during the day as well. So, uh, yeah, so the speed is really interesting. I don't think everyone's ready to kind of pour all that content through social media just yet. Um, but um, it's super interesting to see how we can use yeah. these tools. And we've talked a lot on, on, on these hours about using individual tools. I'm going to say Opus or Augie, but not 
putting them in a package of agents, which I think uh, for so many businesses is going to be um, the answer. And I see Gigi Johnson typing in our chat window. Yes, we have all come a long way. And Piers, you're about where Jeremy was when he first came on our show. So you got to come back next year also. And mm -hmm. um, I know that you'll be even further. The pace is astounding. So any thoughts, Gigi, did you want to, did you want to say, oh, I know who's, who's there that we wanted to hear from. Um, I don't know if he's still with us. He has a great, Andrew, Anthony, you there? Yes, I mean. Do you want to just talk a little bit? We saw Anthony's product and we're so wowed because it treats, uses AI to treat an accessibility issue. You want to talk a little bit about it for a minute? Oh, sure. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Anthony Phils. Uh, you might have seen or used some of the products that I've been wor I've worked on, uh, like uh, Indes InDesign is one of the big ones that is out there. And if you actually ever go to a Hilton hotel and you use their digital key, I would I me and my team were the ones behind that for for the Hilton to bring that forward. Um, but as as was asked of me. Uh, the topic I would like to talk to today or to share with you is a slide teller. Uh, let me share my screen here. First up, I just want to say thanks to my mother because without her, none of this would be happening. She's an amazing woman who's always been by my side through this journey. Uh, let, I'm going to jump in right here. Okay. So slide teller is an application for, for the visually impaired. And basically what it does is that if you're doing a presentation, it allows you, it allows the visually impaired person to have an audio description of the slide that's being presented to the audience. Very clean and simple approach that, that I'm doing here. Now, I, and I'm going to give you an example of this. This is exactly, this is what they, they hear. She's an egoistic cat who owned the cat as a pet. Right. So that's what we, that's what. Hello Kitty company oh. says. Yeah. So this is what's actually being seen on the screen, right? We have, we have our talent. She's doing her presentation, right? And on the other side, we have um, the application that the visually impaired person has downloaded. They have, uh, so as, as this, the slides go through, they actually receive an audio description, which they can actually play. Now, this was something that we actually tested uh, last year in uh, September at the, the uh, Vancouver Fringe Festival. We had, a, a, we had a couple of days where we had uh, blind individuals that came and we were able to test with them. They downloaded the app and they actually tried it out they gave me feedback and now we have been spending our time uh, fixing it so that it's more, I would think that it's more of a seamless experience for them uh, as they, as they get into the show. Cause most of the, the friction that we had was more from the, uh, uh, the venue being able to connect to their, their Wi-Fi and stuff like that. But otherwise for receiving the content, it was really good. Now, we still have to test it for presentations where you actually flip through a lot of screens quickly. But as you see here, you you can actually have a, a, a backlog of audio that they can listen to whenever they want. The, oh, one second. So the next thing that we're, we're also working on, hopefully we'll start uh, September, is we're working on our AI bot for, for Zoom or any other platform, WebEx. Where, where once the once you start your presentation, it will be able to send them also an audio description, a text or audio description to to their to their laptop or whatever device they're using to to engage with the uh, Zoom presentation. That's another another big one that we we're, we're working on. A lot of uh, all these things we actually filed patent work a uh, year before, and we're just kind of finishing finishing up right now for this. And then last but not least, we, we, we're we also putting together a whole a API and the ability to also describe shows. So if you're like at a Taylor Swift concert, we'll be able to describe the shows for you. 
And as the new language models come out, which do descriptions of your environment, ours is going to be more targeted to the event and what's actually going on. Because presently, AI can't tell you what's going on on the stage. But this, this is where we're going to be working to get that to happen. And we'll, you know, I'm hoping that everything works out the way it should. And you never know. Uh, we'll be changing the lives of a lot of uh, visually impaired individuals out there in the world. Thank you for thank Thanks. you for joining us. Really, you got four for the price of three, you guys. And the, um, <laughs> keep keep up. And Anthony's only also fairly early into this journey, yes. so um, the speed is just amazing. And I know we just have like a few minutes left, but thank you for that. Totally, totally exciting to give people another. Uh, model to hear. So what are we up to next? Um, just quick things. Um, if anybody's going to the AWE show, um, I am speaking, this is one side painful and one side really exciting. We're talking about Welcome to the Elderverse, where um, see, what seniors are doing in VR will blow your mind. Uh, Rick Robinson is from AARP. We have uh, Mind VR. We have um, a practitioner who actually uses VR to um, do uh, everything from physical therapy to uh, engagement and social and entertainment. So um, my kind of tagline is, as your real world sometimes gets smaller, your virtual world can be boundless. So I'll be there next week. If anybody's in Long Beach, California, give me a shout. And then in the fall, we're working on a gonzo 12 hour long virtual event that will span the globe, inviting um, climate investors and climate tech solutions and companies to meet each other. We're going in two hour blocks starting in Singapore and you don't have to be there for the whole 12 hours unless you're my team, but um, it's uh, you'll be able to see it and watch it. And Piers, maybe we could use some of your event recap stuff. Um, and finally, um, July. We're, I wasn't going to do July. Give you, we'll, I'll take a summer off, but Steve Greenberg, who I spoke to the other day, who's a fabulous journalist and and uh, television um, personality. Steve has built this hysterically funny game called What the Heck Is That? It's a gadget game. And we are going to play it with him both in the virtual, he's done a virtual version in the virtual world and a real version. If you want to be a contestant, shoot me a note because I'm going to pre-pick the contestants to be on the show. Tony, I see your name written all over this um, to be in this. And we're also going to spend a little time talking about what I just spoke in Geneva about, which are deep fakes and, and the future of truth. And um, it, it is um, it, there are solutions out there. We'll go over some of them. There will not be a silver bullet. That is the announcement. So with that, um, I will get ready to sign off um, and this will be online to our friends watching on LinkedIn and Facebook. I hope you enjoyed it and um, we'll see you in July. <laughs>